viewing any videos in this series is strictly voluntary. Welcome back to our series on what it means to be a whole person in Christ. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I would encourage you to watch those. It is somewhat cumulative. Today we are looking at the phrase, loving God with our whole heart, and what that means. The Greek word translated as heart in Matthew 22, 37 and Mark 12, 30 is cardia. Now, obviously that sounds like cardiac. In fact, that's where we get our word for uh, cardiac or heart or cardiologist. But it's not about the organ in your chest. In fact, cardia in the New Testament never refers to the physical organ in our chest. It is more uh, translated to convey the idea of what is central in us. Uh, sometimes it talks about something being at the heart of the earth, uh, within the earth, or toward the center of the earth. So it's the idea of what's inside that affects or flows from uh, that center to um, manifests itself outside. So it's the center of our being. Think of your heart, that is the center of your being, as your treasure chest. What do you treasure? in your chest. In other words, we are to love God with the substance of our treasures, and we can see our love by our sentiment toward treasure hunters. Now, what do I mean by that? Whatever we love inside, not that we love the organ in our body, but whatever our soul, our spirit, our, the, the most um, inner part of our being cherishes, whatever we dwell on and think about and pursue, because that's what we crave, those things are to honor God. They are to be ways that we show our love for God. And we can do that with our family, with our job, with uh, our, our friends, our possessions, uh, our hobbies. Everything can be an opportunity to express and experience uh, our love for God and His love for us. But we can see what our, our love truly is by our sentiment or our feelings because uh, our heart is also associated, at least we associate it with our emotions. We can see our love by our sentiment toward other treasure hunters, meaning when people want to mess with the things that we love, how do we respond? When they go digging around in the things that we value uh, and that we cherish, what is our emotional response? Do we feel bad, mad, sad, or glad? Because that's going to reflect uh, or show whether we truly love the Lord and see that everything belongs to Him. And we want to um, give that to them uh, to honor the Lord in the ways that we uh, live open-handedly. That's, that's why the avatar on my Facebook page is open hands. I want to give whatever uh, the Lord gives to me, and I want to receive whatever uh, the Lord gives to me and let him take it if he wants to. But if I, if I start becoming fearful or angry or um, depressed because others are using or enjoying or taking my treasure or the things that I treasure, maybe I don't treasure the Lord. Maybe I treasure my stuff more than I should. So loving God with all of our heart means that everything that we cherish is to please God and is to reflect our love for God. Now, I say it should. It doesn't necessarily. The first chapters of Genesis reveal the natural flow from our heart, that is our center. First, shame. When we disobey God or neglect God or love anything other than God, we tend to hide from Him and each other. And we can see this in Adam and Eve hiding in the trees of the Garden of Eden. And then blame pointing to others' guilt rather than owning our own guilt. And you can read their responses as they're talking to the Lord about what he did, what she did, what the serpent did. Uh, Adam even blames God himself. And then there's a game, trying to earn points with God or others by our effort, not his grace. Note their clothing, that they try to clothe themselves by their own efforts, and then God clothes them by the death of another. Then there's an aim, focusing our love on ourself or God. Compare the lines of Cain, which focused on what they did and how impressive they were, versus the line of Abel at the end of Genesis 4, and they call on the name of the Lord. And finally, fame, either seeking the goal of our own glory or God's. Compare the Tower of Babel and Abraham and his obedience to God to go make a name for himself. They gathered together at Babel to make a name for themselves, but God said to spread out and to make a name for him. 
So that's the natural flow from us, the shame and the blame and the game and all that. But then there's a point at which we've got to decide where we're going to aim. Are we going to aim inwardly at our own glory uh, and hoping in ourselves? Or are we going to aim upwardly at focusing on God and trusting in Him? And for whose fame? For our own or for God's? Well, Genesis to Revelation reveals that all treasures are heart venues. Colossians 3 verse 17 says, And whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And in Titus 1.15, To the pure all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupted. Now, that Titus verse doesn't mean that we can go out and do anything for God's glory. Go cheat with somebody else's spouse, overeat at some buffet, uh, sit and waste time watching uh, 72 hours of, of uh, Seinfeld, although Seinfeld, I really enjoy some episodes of Seinfeld. Anyway, um, everything is a venue of the heart, what we love. And the Psalms show that God wants to hear and heal the whole of our heart. I love the Psalms because the Psalms run the gamut of bad, mad, sad, and glad. Not just the substance of what we love, but the sentiment of our loves and how uh, God invites us to bring him our anger, our depression, our fear, our numbness, so that we leave with a healing uh, to repent of our selfishness or idolizing somebody else or uh, neglecting him so that we, again, delight in all that he is. And lastly, the New Testament explains our struggle as between God's spirit and our flesh. Galatians 6, 8 says, Whoever sows to please their flesh... From the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Meaning if we just do things to feel better emotionally, uh, and that might even mean attending a church where the music makes you feel good and the pastor, his messages make you feel good, but they're all about how wonderful we are or just focused on uh, the Lord's great love, and, and never about His holiness, never about our repentance, never about self-sacrifice for others, uh, even when it's difficult, sometimes over a long period of time. Our whole heart means uh, loving God with all that we love inside, because that flows into our relationship. So this tells us that uh, being whole involves everything that we are and have, uh, everything that we are emotional about, everything that we are passionate about, even the things that we're bored about, all of those things should be uh, redeemed or bought back to present them to God as, Lord, you gave me this. I'm giving it back to you uh, in the ways that I live it in the hopes that it pleases you. And when we are transformed by the Holy Spirit to want to please God, then we are more and more able to live that type of life so that it's not fragmented into just the things that are convenient to us or just things that the society would call spiritual, but everything that we love uh, matches with the things that God loves. I hope that makes sense. It's about our passions. It's about our treasures. Uh, tune in next time, and we'll take a look at what it means to love God with all of our soul. And that's not redundant to our heart. It's a different point, and I hope you'll join me then.